Hello everyone, welcome to Bald Guy Money. I am Bald Guy, and just yesterday I shared this post on X talking about how I am seeing too many amateur analysts and metals commentators distracted by short-term volatility in the prices of gold and silver while totally ignoring what I think are the bullish fundamentals. For example, if we zoom out and take an honest look at gold performance, starting with the moving averages, so the numbers that measure the average price of an asset over a specific period of time, what we see here is that the 50-day moving average price of gold is at $2,371.90 per ounce, which is 9.7% higher than the 200-day moving average price of $2,162.90 per ounce. And at the risk of oversimplifying things, what this typically means is when the 50-day average is higher than the 200-day average is that you are in a bull market. Now, if we zoom out a little more since gold bottomed out in 2015, following the 2011 and 2012 blow off top that we saw, which brought gold near $2,000, the average closing price for gold, meaning the average finishing price for gold at the end of a trading day, and this is a very important statistic, has increased for nine consecutive years. In fact, it's up 90% over that nine period, uh, nine year period of time, I should say, versus 148% for the S&P 500 to give you a point of reference, meaning that for a safe haven asset, it's performed very well in a risk on environment. So instead of stressing out about little day to day moves, I say focus on the big stuff. Because if gold has done this well in a risk on environment, meaning investors are willing to take on a little more risk in their investment, Investments as they seek higher returns, just imagine what's going to happen to the prices of both gold and silver when the market turns to risk off as things start to go sour. And that's why in this video, I want to dig a little deeper into that and cover what it is I am seeing happening in the market that indicates investors may soon abandon riskier investments and move to safe havens like gold and silver. That's the first point. And right before we get to this video's viewer question, I want to give you all a quick update on how much gold and silver I think you should stack as a minimum target to protect yourself from economic and systemic uncertainties. And that will be a concrete number in troy ounces given to you, no percentages. So be sure to watch this video to the very end because it's a very important one. Now, just before we get into it, if you're in the USA and want to buy gold or silver at a great price from a reputable dealer, please check out channel partner Pimbex at Pimbex.com to see what they have to offer. And for those of you who want to get some gold and silver in your IRA, remember they can help. Call them for a free consultation at the number on the screen to find out how. Just please tell them you came from the Bald Guy Money channel. Okay, so jumping right into this, I showed you this image just a moment ago and I said, if you zoom out, gold has done very well in an environment where the market has preferred riskier investments like flashy AI stocks. And I will take that one step further and go as far as to say investors are totally ignoring the opportunity, staring them right in the face right now, because gold and silver are only just getting started. Because as it stands today, it's not the average New York Stock Exchange trader, investment fund manager, or regular Joe retail investor that has been driving the price of metals up. We've covered this in past videos. And that much is obvious when we look at how much money has been taken out of precious metals ETFs in 2024. Because this is usually a good sign of where regular retail investors stand in relation to their attitude towards gold and silver. And and what this data is telling us right here is that not only do they not believe gold and silver can go higher, but it's telling us that they think we're at the top. That's why they're selling out. That's why we're seeing outflows in 2024 as opposed to inflows. Even after we've made decisive breakouts to the upside over the past few months. And I will digress for a moment and say recent performance of the mining stocks is showing us, us the exact same thing. 
Retail investors do not understand gold. They do not understand silver or the opportunity coming in those metals when the markets start to come down, when the broader markets start to come down. But mark my words, they will come to appreciate the stability and safety that gold and silver offer, and they will start to pile back into the very ETFs that they're selling off once the stock market starts to correct. Because if the behavior of insiders at the world's biggest companies and investment firms is any indication of where risk on investments are in their life cycle right now, it's that the stock market is slowly running out of steam. And I know I've been talking about this for about a year now, but I have pulled up some data here showing what NVIDIA insiders have been up to for the past year. So these are people within the company. And as you can see, over the past three months, the percentage of insider transactions at the company that's been driving the S&P 500 up show us that insider sales have risen to 92% of transactions compared to only 75% of transactions being sales over the past 12 months. So what this says in a nutshell is that NVIDIA insiders are selling their stocks. And when we look at how that breaks down into actual shares traded, you can see that 96% of shares that were either bought or sold by NVIDIA insiders are shares that are being sold versus 74% over the last 12 months. And this data shows us that insiders are starting to cash out and sadly, as I've said in past videos, it will leave a lot of regular Joe retail investors who are being urged on by the media to enter the market at all time highs. Well, it will leave them holding the bag when the market comes crashing down. So the question is, what can you do about it? What, how can you prepare yourself for a situation where the economy slows down even more than it already has slowed down? And I say that as we look at the development of the unemployment rate in four key countries, which you can see are all at 12 month highs and on a growth trajectory because, and I want you all to remember this, this is an important point. The economy is not the stock market. The downturn starts here in the labor market, and then it gradually trickles into the stock market as consumers stop consuming, they stop paying their debts, and struggle to make ends meet, which we are already seeing many signs of that happening right now. So again, I ask you, what is it that you can do today to prepare yourself moving forward? Well, back in 2021, I did a video. In fact, it was one of my first videos. And in it, I talked about how much gold and silver I think people should aim to have as a first level stacking target. Because it's one thing to know that you need to have some gold and silver around, but it's another thing to know how much you need and actively work towards achieving the target. And as you can see in the image here, what I said back in 2021 was that I think a good minimum stacking target is to get yourself five ounces of gold and 200 ounces of silver. And let me add that at the time, premiums on sovereign coins for silver, silver sovereign coins, were out of control. And I was saying at the time that I'd focus 75% of that silver stack on bars because they were much cheaper than coins at the time. Now, if you watch that video, you'll remember this data from the US Bureau of Labor Statistics that showed the average monthly expenses for an American. And what I said was that having that five ounces of gold and 200 ounces of silver covered a little more than three months of those expenses. And that I thought that was a reasonable coverage period to aim for as a first level stacking target. And here is the US dollar calculation I showed in that video where five ounces of gold and 200 ounces of silver were worth $14,300 at spot. Now, since 2021, there has been a lot of inflation and the US dollar prices of gold and silver have gone up since that time. Meaning what was $14,300 in metals is now $17,600. And the question is, how does that stack up to what the Bureau of Labor Statistics says the average expenses for an American are today? 
Well, here are the latest figures from the BLS showing that the average monthly cost of what I categorize as essential expenses back in 2021, and I did this I did this calculation this way to make sure that we were doing an apples to apples comparison versus the 2021 video. Those expenses for an American have risen by about 20%, where the total value of the metals at spot price have gone up by 23%. And that means that my stacking goal of 5 ounces of gold and 200 ounces of silver still makes sense in 2024. In fact, when you round the coverage time numbers, that amount of gold and silver covered 3.3 months of expenses in 2021 and still covers 3.3 months of expenses in 2024. And that shows us just how good precious metals are at sniffing out inflation and protecting purchasing power. Now, just before I get into this video's viewer question, I know that some of you may be thinking you don't need this much gold and silver to cover essential expenses where you live. Or you might be asking yourselves, how does that break down for a family of four? Well, I just want to remind you all that I have a tool that breaks that down according to your preferred gold and silver split for a single person or family of four, it breaks it down for your country, for the ones that I've shown here on the screen, and it also breaks it down on those parameters per US state for all 50 states, and that tool is on my Patreon, so if you like my content and want to support me there and get access to tools like this, the link to join is in the description and pinned comment. And I also want to say, just before I get to this video's uh, viewer question, that by pure coincidence, my very good friend, Two is One, who has a great YouTube channel, I know that many of you watch it, also did a similar breakdown as it applies to gold only. So if you're interested in this topic, please check out his video. It's from just a couple days ago to get his take on this topic. I think it's worth your time. And now moving on to this video's viewer question, and it comes from a viewer named Walter Hat. Hello, Walter. Thanks for submitting your question. And he asks, what are the upsides and downsides to putting money in GLD and SLV? And for those of you who don't know what GLD and SLV are, these are two of the large gold and silver ETFs. And I thought this question tied in very well with this video since I was just talking about outflows from these ETFs a moment ago. And I wanted to use this as a moment to share my point of view on these ETFs and how I would approach them. And I'll start from the upside or the pro as I have called it here on the screen. And I'd say the pro is more for short-term traders when it comes to these ETFs who want to get quick in and out exposure to precious metals prices and are comfortable with having their trades settled in US dollars. If you're someone looking for short-term capital gains, being in these ETFs is probably the best option for you as the premiums on physical metals can eat into short-term profits. On the con side though, so the biggest downside I see to these ETFs is that if you're a long-term metals bull who is stacking to protect yourself against the clearly corrupt and failing fiat money system, which that's the category that I find myself in, owning SLV or GLD only gives you a paper claim to the US dollar value of the metal. If there is some divergence between what the market truly values metals at and what the US dollar value they'll give you is, then you're out of luck. And if there is hyperinflation and the dollar becomes worthless, meaning you can't trade dollars for anything, they can settle your account, their debt to you, in those worthless dollars and keep the metals for themselves, which means these ETFs don't truly protect you in the case of a total collapse of the financial system. Now, I'm sure there are a lot of people furiously typing in the comments section right now, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. It's become a bit of a call to action by some of the other YouTube channels out there who are either trying to usually scare you for clicks or they're trying to sell you something. And although I believe in holding the physical, if you're a trader and see a large price pump potentially incoming for gold or silver and you just want to make some fiat profits on that prediction, on that gut feeling, maybe it's a gut feeling you're acting on, I don't see any harm in doing that. Ultimately, I started this channel because I wanted people to improve the quality of their lives. And I have improved the quality of my own life using financial vehicles other than gold and silver, like stocks, 
like real estate and yes even bitcoin i know many of you hate bitcoin out there i'm not telling you to buy it i'm just sharing you with you all my personal experience and basically what i've done is i've used a good portion of the profits that i've made from those other investments and in the case of real estate cash flow coming from the passive income from my real estate to buy physical gold and silver. Because listen, I am a skeptic when it comes to the financial system and I prepare myself accordingly while trying to maximize the level of that preparation by using my knowledge of how the current financial system functions to benefit from it rather than just ignoring it. With that said, that's it for this video. I want to thank you all for watching. Please remember to hit the like if you liked this video. Remember to leave me a comment and share this video with other people if you think they need to hear this message. This is one of the fastest growing precious metals channels on YouTube right now. Thanks to you. Thanks for you sharing my videos. Thanks for all of you liking my videos and commenting on them. I want to thank you very much for supporting me here as I get ready to go full time on YouTube in July of this year. Yes, it's right around the corner and I'm moving right now. My house is basically empty right now. So just as a, a little update as to what's happening in my life right now. And until the next time we see each other, everybody, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Goodbye.